once just isn't enough. Isn't there some other way? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 video games that encourage multiple playthroughs. With your approval, we will begin research immediately. For this list, we're looking at the most unique and creative ways that video games encourage players to play through the whole game repeatedly from start to finish. Which means that if it's possible to get 100% of the game's content without going from the start to finish multiple times, it's out. And because this was a tight list, our one game per franchise rule is in effect. Change is coming. Number 10, Star Fox 64. Things are starting to heat up. The war for the Lilat system gives you multiple ways to achieve your goal of reaching the planet Venom. Say your prayers, Andros. Most of the levels in the game have a certain requirement that, if met, you'll be able to unlock a harder route on your way to the end. These can be as simple as beating a boss within a certain time to finding hidden warp gates. Shoot the light switches to open the lock. Furthermore, characters you meet in certain worlds will follow you to the next stage, allowing you to find secrets you might not know of. Make way for and for the pros out there, every stage has a score target that, if met, rewards you with a medal, which can be used to unlock the insane expert mode. I would be honored to have you as part of the Cornarian. Oh no, sir. We prefer doing things our own way. Number nine, Until Dawn. Did you hear that? I heard something. From the get-go, this game lets you know that for every choice you make, there's always an alternative. As such, this AAA title has a lot to offer even after the surprise twist has been revealed. No, you're not! Real! No, you're not! Of course, the main reason to replay stems from how many of the characters you manage to keep alive. A second playthrough will have you questioning your every decision as you try to ensure that none of the protagonists will become Wendy Gopotter. Or it could be that you hate them and you want to see all the horrible ways that they die. Telltale's The Walking Dead follows the same formula, but due to its standalone nature, this homage to the classic horror tropes trumps it. Oh no, you're just making yourself feel better about sending me to my death since you know there's a Wendigo out there ready to rip me to pieces like it did with- Okay, oh my god, will you just go? Number 8, Fallout 4. I didn't expect to see you again. The best part of Bethesda's vast open worlds is that it's so easy to lose yourself in the side quests without even venturing towards the game's main storyline. My designation is Contagions, Vulnerability, Robotic, Infirmary, Engineer. Or Curie. Skyrim is a testament to that, but aside from choosing the Stormcloaks or the Imperial Legion, there's not much differentiation a second time around. The same can't be said for this journey through post-apocalyptic Boston where your loyalty to one of four factions dictates who you come into conflict with and which missions you'll end up taking on. Whatever your personal feelings on synths are during your first playthrough, the temptation to join one of the institutions will be just too much to resist settling for just one ending. Number 7, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. You're angry, wanted to unload. But be that careless, and next time... Don't you understand? There won't be a next time! Undoubtedly the most expansive and investing installment of this dark fantasy trilogy, there's enough content still brimming in the Northern Kingdoms to ensure that we won't be saying goodbye to the White Wolf just yet, even disregarding the highly detailed DLCs that add new layers to Geralt's adventures. Keep your fingers crossed. The multiple endings and branching paths that may or may not end in the death of your companions will have players eagerly returning to combat the Wild Hunt a second time. Mm, I don't know if... As you will. You're always welcome. Also, let's be honest, after making the impossible decision of choosing between Triss and Yennefer, you were dying to head back to the start to romance the other one. Or to try your best not to screw it up if that's what you did. Oh no. Number 6, Hitman Blood Money. This'll give you the extra oomph you'll need to make the most of your time at the grotto if you know what I mean. If assassination isn't art, then this entry in the Hitman franchise is most definitely its canvas. Oh. Despite having an intriguing narrative, the most thrilling aspect of this game by far was the variety in which you could dispatch of your opponents. The non-linear approach and sheer number of ways you could take out your mark practically demands replayability. Even if you're not one for finding new or inventive ways of killing off your contracts, the challenge of flawlessly executing the mission and earning the rank of Silent Assassin is too delicious a thrill to pass up. We're still losing agents. You got the briefing? Yesterday. Got the pictures right here. Number 5. Resident Evil 2. Mm. 
This critically acclaimed sequel made everything bigger and bolder. The settings, the characters, the horror, and yes, even the replay value. Get away from me. You just want my husband's GSM, don't you? Here, players can assume the roles of both Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield as they battle their way through Raccoon City in the middle of a zombie outbreak. Huh? Wait! Don't shoot! Get down! <gasps> Depending on your choice of character and end of level ranking, various items, minigames, weapons, and costumes can be unlocked for the next time around. Needless to say that back in the late 90s, this was more than enough of a reason to lock and load and take on the horrors of the T-Virus for a second run through. Number 4, Undertale. Do you want to have a bad time? Well, there's no chance of that while traversing through the underground in the indie hit title that literally broke so many fourth walls it redefined the genre. Should you take the path of the pacifist, there's little chance you'd be able to earn yourself the true ending on your first run. So you'll find yourself compelled to play again to earn your and every other monster's happy ending. Should you take the genocide route, prepare yourself as the game will remember every visceral action you take, so don't think you can suddenly escape without consequences. Whatever you do, it's bound to make for a memorable tale. A memorable undertale, maybe? Teehee. I'm sorry. Number 3, Civilization 5. Think you can cultivate, explore, and expand the span of an entire nation in one playthrough? Not a chance. You have mistaken our love for peace for weakness. You shall regret this. This highly successful 4x turn-based strategy demands players take control of their own civilization and lead them through a thousand years of development. Victory conditions vary on a number of factors, ranging from diplomacy, research, economic growth, and military conquest, not to mention your approach to other nations, which can either be handled peacefully or, of course, through violence. With various nations to choose to build your empire from, as well as control over how your people conduct themselves in regards to rival groups, the amassing of a single civilization barely scratches the surface of this one. The day is yours. I hope you will be merciful in your triumph. Number 2. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth Roguelikes in more recent years have seen a revival on the indie scene, and while we did consider faster than light, the features included in The Binding of Isaac easily overshadowed it. Procedurally generated dungeons, permadeath, thousands of different stat modifiers to find, all of it is a winning format. Every time you play through the game, you unlock new areas, bosses, and dungeon themes to explore on your next encounter. And with multiple final bosses and endings to discover, there's always a reason to go back to Isaac's basement. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Delta One is down. So be it. Number one, Mass Effect series. Weapons down, all of you. Ash, don't get excited here. What Bioware started with Knights of the Old Republic, they perfected in their own epic sci-fi trilogy. All they care about is their war with the Geth. From the first game onwards, your choices as Commander Shepard, whether they be Paragon or Renegade, hold the fate of all life in the galaxy, especially in regards to who lives and who dies among your crew. And as you probably know by now, you can bring your game data over from one game to the next. Aside from your moral compass though, your choices of romance options and whether you go with Fem Shep or Male Shep offer a completely new experience, should you reload the game and take up command of the Normandy for a second time. Shepard is saving the galaxy, you have to forgive a few eccentricities. 
It's very enthusiastic. Whether you're the ultimate hero, the ultimate badass, or something in between, the universe this series creates definitely requires more than one playthrough. I know what you are, and the price of dealing with you. We do things my way from now on. Do you agree with our list? What game do you think encourages multiple playthroughs? With new top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Never give up! Trust your instinct!